Today we're talking about the Fellow Ode 2, the sequel to the Fellow Ode 1 grinder that came out in 2020. A grinder I was very excited for them to release, but a grinder that I had a few real issues with in my review. In this sequel, have they fixed those issues? Is this now a grinder that's going to be easy for me to recommend at the end of this video? If you're not familiar with the Ode, it's a grinder from a company called Fellow. It's a filter coffee only single dose grinder. It's got 31 steps of adjustment going all the way from very coarse down to, well, not quite fine enough for espresso, but really pretty fine. Now, in my first review, there were two big areas that I had concerns or problems with. One around grinding and one around, let's just say, user experience. We're going to address those two areas and talk about them a bit more in how they relate to this new version of the grinder. Let's start with how it grinds coffee. Now, the fellow owed one, they chose a set of what they called interlocking burrs. They were an interesting design of burr set, but they did not allow you to grind fine enough for the kind of brewing that I like to do, which is say 15 grams of coffee from a light roast in say a V60. That needs a pretty fine grind and the owed one simply couldn't do it. The burrs couldn't get close enough because of their design. And as a result, for me, that was a kind of deal breaker for the grinder. Now, alongside this grinder, which has changed too, they've been working on the Gen 2 burrs. I have a set of them here. These were supplied to me to go into my Ode 1 because I was a Kickstarter backer. Uh, that grinder currently has a set of SSP burrs in it. We'll talk about this stuff too, don't you worry. These burrs, I think, are frankly very good. They're being sold uh, separately for $80, and I think as an $80 burr set, they offer great value for money. I used this grinder to do a lot of testing for the one cup V60 video that I put out not too long ago. So I, I feel like I've got a really good idea of how this kind of brews coffee and the coffee that it produces. And I also talked to Lance Hedrick, who alongside Nick from Fellow did a lot of testing along with I think some other industry experts too, but Lance did a lot of testing and I spoke to both Lance and Nick about what they were trying to achieve. They were aiming for a burr set that would give you great kind of texture and body with more developed roasts, but clarity and sweetness with lighter roasts. And I have to say, I think Nick's burr design on this was excellent. I really enjoyed drinking the coffee that this burr set produced. I, I think it's, it's very good coffee. Can you produce better coffee by spending more money? You can, but those returns are rapidly diminishing. I think if you were to drink the coffee from these burrs on its own, you'd really have a very good time. Yes, when you put them in comparison with a more expensive set or a more expensive grinder, you can taste the differences. But when I say those returns are diminishing, I really, really mean it. Quite early on, I thought it would be interesting to compare this to the SSP burrs. And in the cup at matching extractions, they were surprisingly close. There was maybe a little bit more clarity in the SSP burrs, fractionally more sweetness maybe. But, you know, I, I was really searching for those differences. And it felt so close actually that I, I took samples of both grinders and had them run through a particle size analyzer. Now, before I show you the results of laser particle size analysis, it's an important caveat. Anytime anyone shows you some data from one of these, you've got to understand that this is not how these burrs perform generally. This is how these burrs performed on that day with that particular roast of that particular coffee at that particular grind setting. They're a really specific instance, but I think if you take the same extraction and therefore the same theoretical grind setting from two different burrs and compare them, that is interesting. And as you'll see, as, as we show you the data, they were really pretty similar. Yes, the SSP produced less fines, not a huge amount less fines, but you, you can see there is a difference there in the finer particles, slightly more uniformity generally, but really pretty close. Those SSP burrs sell for $185 on Fellow's website. And I'm not sure that for most people in the world, those $105 are well spent. These $80 burrs perform, I think, really very well. It's clear that Nick and the team at Fellow put in a lot of time to get this whole thing right. And I think it was time well spent. Now we need to talk about the UX kind of piece of it because frankly, the Ode one was messy and a little bit annoying. To highlight the changes they've made, I'm gonna brew some coffee. So the first change they've made is the hopper on top. It's a little bit taller, and that means you can get say 80 grams of coffee in here relatively easily. More important than the, the kind of capacity for most people is the fact that the angle of the hopper has changed. The Ode one, I think, had about a 20 degree angle. This has gone up to a 27 degree angle. So you're less likely with the Ode two when you pour your beans in to have a few beans left behind in the hopper that didn't fall all the way through into the burr set. Something that is frankly, very annoying. The second change is harder to show you here. 
Uh, we'll go into it in a little bit more detail in a second, but there is an ionizer at the exit chute of this grinder. They've redesigned the exit chute and massively improved it. The old grinder both had a lot of static issues as well as a lot of retention when you were grinding. This grinder still has some retention and some exchange wherein you might put 15 grams in and get 15 grams out, but not all of the 15 grams coming out is the same coffee that you put in. Some may be retained from the time before and pushed out, a new coffee then gets stuck and left inside. This makes way less mess, way less static. It is a massive quality of life improvement for me because the static on the first one really, really kind of wound me up. Did you hear that? Or did you not hear that? The first ode had this really irritating beep when it finished grinding that I frankly did not understand. <sighs> Firstly, it wasn't a good beep and you need a good beep. And secondly, there's already an auditory cue that the grinder has finished grinding, as in I can't hear it grinding anymore. You don't need to give me a secondary signal to say I've stopped grinding. If you were trying to add a secondary signal, it would make sense to do something for people who maybe couldn't hear it grinding and give them a little light so they know that it's finished grinding. This doesn't beep, and that's great. That makes me happy. You didn't need to beep. It doesn't beep. That's about the most annoying noise on this grinder. And it's not that annoying. It's not a bad bag knocker. The dosing cup here that you can use to weigh your coffee beans in if you want to, uh, and obviously you would grind into, has been changed as well. It's a little bit larger to accommodate more coffee because the hopper can accommodate more coffee, but it's still got the little fins inside. And I've got to tell you, I don't love the little fins. I feel like if they'd changed the angle of the fins here, made them a little steeper, a little sharper, they'd be less likely to sort of trap coffee behind them when you dose it out uh, and do the job of funneling the coffee quite nicely. But this setup here, often you need to kind of go back, shake a little bit and pour a second time. And that just doesn't really delight me. Now they did keep the magnet on the bottom of this and the magnet here so that you do have the fun little snap. I do have one more nitpick. I, I know I have reviewer brain and I'm kind of broken in that way, but the way that this lid fits on this dosing cup really kind of bothers me. It just, it sits that fraction bit loose always. And, and that, I don't like it. I don't like it. It makes it feel like I haven't seated it right and I end up sort of faffing around and trying to reseat it. I think you could probably get away with just not using this. And that would be the answer. I'll be honest, if, if someone made a third party dosing cup for this, I'd be interested if it was without fins and didn't do some of the annoying stuff that this does. Uh, and it just, it just irks me. And, and I don't want to be irked. It's done so much in terms of its evolution from the one to the two to remove points of frustration, but it's, it's got this weird one that kind of wound me up. Let me brew this coffee. Nailing this recipe. Now, while this cools down so I can drink it and I really do want to drink it. I want to go back and talk a little bit more about the ionizer on this thing, which is, I think, a significant improvement. To give you an idea of how effective it is, what I'll do is I'll show you the Ode 1 and the Ode 2, both with no sort of spray of water onto the beans. It's called the Ross Droplet Technique, if you're not familiar with it, and it removes static in most grinders. So I'll give you, with and without the spray, on both grinders side by side, shot in absurdly high frame rates, so you can really kind of see the difference between all of them. I always spray as a kind of force of habit, and so I still spray with this, and I, I generally prefer to still spray with this grinder, but if I forget, I don't feel punished the same way that I did with the first generation of Ode Grinder. Here they are in glorious slow motion. Now I will say if you're looking at my dial and thinking that's a bit finer than you might be using it, we are getting pretty high extractions with light roasted coffees around here. So 22 to 23% very comfortably with a V60 like this. Uh, and the cups have been just great. Tons of sweetness, plenty of clarity, nice body. Uh, and I don't want to nitpick it against other burrs because most people never will. Does it make a coffee you will enjoy most mornings? Yes, yes it does. Uh, and in terms of summary, does it still look good? It really does. I like the design of the Ode very much. I love its very small footprint. Uh, I think it's simple in all the right ways. And in fact, one small improvement they've made, I feel like particularly useful to me, is that on the inside of this, they changed very slightly 
this chart to explain the numbers on here. I just couldn't read the first one. I, I just felt like I was just not, not bright enough to kind of cope with the information I was presented. This I find much more readable and understandable, and so I'm grateful to Fellow for that one, because I, because I messed it up the first time. Always embarrassing when it's on YouTube forever. So it feels like this is an easy recommendation from me, and it nearly is. You know, the little gripes that I have with it, the little complaints are really relatively small. The last thing that we haven't talked about is price. Now, this isn't out in the UK yet. In fact, this is a, a 110 US model, uh, the 240 volt or the 230 volt or whatever the proper voltage is going to be. That's coming a little bit later, and so I don't have the pricing for that yet. But in the US, this is $345, which I don't know how I feel about that. The first grinder, I think, was 299 or 295 or it was, it was a $300 grinder, but the left digit, perhaps the most important digit, was a 2, and they've made it a 3 here. Now, I'm not sure it feels like it should be a more expensive grinder, because yes, they've spent money on a new burr set and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time, they've built a lot of these, component costs should be coming down. They talk about how the new Opus grinder, the new Espresso and Filter Conical Burr grinder, has a more powerful motor in there. So the cost of this, I'm not really sure where it is. Now this is just pure speculation on my part, but I feel like the price is the price in part because they still have stock of the Ode 1 that they need to sell. Uh, and I think if that grinder was put up against this grinder and this one was under $300, people would just choose this every single time, and people wouldn't buy the cheaper Ode at the price that they're trying to sell it at. So by having it that little bit higher, I think it creates a nice differential in price that encourages sales of the Ode uh, sort of number one. Uh, but for people who really care about all the things that the Ode 2 does, <sighs> yes, I think it's good value for money. I think there are grinders coming that will challenge its space in terms of being small footprint, really good for filter coffee, not capable of espresso, but but well-made, well-built, enjoyable to use, great cup quality. Right now, a lot of people are like, what grinder should I get for filter? I don't want to do espresso at home. This feels much easier to recommend as long as they have the budget. And 345 does feel like quite a lot of money. If this was at 295, I just feel it'd be so easy to recommend it. So that's my opinion of the Ode 2 with the Gen 2 burrs. I have to say, I'm pleased with the changes that have been made. I think it is a good grinder. I enjoy the coffee that comes out of it very much. Mm. Oh, that's very nice. That is nice. I'm derailing myself immediately. I'm trying to wrap up here. Now, this particular grinder is going to go to one of my Patreon supporters. They support me in being able to buy this equipment at full price like a normal consumer, and then test it and give you my honest opinion and not be reliant on review units or freebies or any of that stuff. So thank you so much to them for the support in doing this. But now I want to hear from you down in the comments below. These are shipping. People have these. How has your experience been with it? Has it been different to mine? I have heard people having different experiences, issues with things like jamming or stalling or that kind of stuff. I've had no issues of any kind with this grinder at lighter or more developed roasts. So if you're having a different experience, if you want to share how you're getting on, leave me a comment down below. We would love to hear from you. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.